This is where we talk about how we grow both a powerful brand and business and life as well, because everything's connected. Welcome to Brand and Biz Bills. I'm Debbie White. I've spent 30 years in the creative advertising industry, working with Fortune 500 brands, while also being a serial entrepreneur, building several multiple six and seven figure businesses along the way. I'm talking with other powerful women to share insider secrets and insights about building your brand and business. And I don't have time for BS and fluff. You don't either. So let's get to building a powerful brand and business with some real Frank talk. Follow me on Instagram at frankly Deb so we can connect further. Hey everyone, I am here with someone I'm so excited to introduce you to Liz Nicholas is a mindset expert and master coach and a little disclaimer. She is my personal mindset coach. I talk to her every day. We're going to talk about that too. <laughs> Welcome Liz. So Thanks, good to have Kat. you. I'm so excited. I'm so excited to be here. This is going to be so much fun. Well, fun. So I did not know exactly what a mindset coach was when I very first met you about a year and a half ago, I was like, okay, something to do with my head and my mind. That's good. I need a mindset. And I think a lot, there's a lot of things out books, podcasts, coaches that talk about mindset. But now that I know you and I work with you, you do things very differently. Can you explain what you believe is mindset and what that is? Yeah. Yeah. So mindset, the way I define it, what I believe it truly is, is really just metacognition, thinking about thinking, really taking the time to understand how your brain works and how to operate it. It's the most powerful piece of machinery that we will ever operate, whether you can fly a plane or drive a huge yacht or get in a forklift and make that work, your brain will still be the most complex machine you ever operate. And yet most people have never been trained how to think. And thinking is a skill. It's literally a skill. It's a, it's a science, it's an art, and it's a skill that you can get masterful at for sure. And I think one of the reasons it's so confusing is that First of all, the word's overused. Everybody's talking yes. about mindset. mindset. Everybody's selling a book that has mindset in the title. No. Um, the problem is that so much of what's out there is just fluffy. It's not bad. It's lovely, but it's fluffy. It doesn't do anything. What's fluffy? Give me a fluff. Throw a fluff ball. I mean, fluffy is just trying to be happy all the time, trying to just think positive thoughts all day long. Um, fluffy is just mindfulness with no other practices, just being aware of mm -hmm. what you're thinking, just constantly cultivating awareness, and which is fantastic. And awareness yeah. is our jumping off point and it's foundational, it's important, but it's fluffy on its own. It doesn't have any legs to it. It's not gonna change anybody's life. Because here's the thing, you can be aware all day long. You can be like, oh, I think this and I feel this and oh my goodness, look at my behavior. But if you don't know anything about how you wound up thinking, feeling, and behaving that way, or how to create any kind of shift metacognitively, then all you wind up with is a lot of awareness and no oh forward gosh, motion. That sounded like me before I met you. Like, I'm aware that I think a bunch of crap, but I don't know. I'm going to keep thinking it. <laughs> I'm going to keep thinking I'm going to live under a bridge and all this other just ridiculous bullshit. So, Okay. So how do you do this stuff? I mean, I know we could spend a whole hour on this. And there's so many things I want to ask you. Um, and I can just share you guys. This is what I've learned. And just, it's interesting to hear Liz talk so eloquently about this. Basically, she teaches you how to, how to manage your thoughts and how to like quickly navigate down this old pathway that we probably all do. Like when something happens, Oh my God, Oh my God, this thing happened and it's very dramatic. And you, you know, I talked to Liz and she's like right back on it. She's like, that's a thought. I mean, this is too simplistic. I know for like a one-on-one of what mindset is about, but she'll guide me through what is a fact. What is an emotion? 
there's a whole lot more in that and it's all science-based, but it's amazing. It's just amazing that you can start to really have control over what is real and what is not real and how much we bring so much crazy town emotion that's not real and let that dictate our whole life. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, most of us live in a pretty dramatic brain state and we do want to learn the difference between a thought and a feeling and a behavior and the relationship between those things. Most people get up every day. And I know I did, you know, 25 years ago, 30 years ago, they get up every single day and they sort of take a deep breath and wait to see what the world delivers, what the people at work are going to be doing and talking about what they're saying on the news, um, what the people that you live with might be up to that particular day. So they sort of, I call it like bracing for impact. They're sort of like, let's see what I got and then I'll deal with it. And this is such a victim stance. And most of us live that way. We're just trying to manage what's thrown at us all day long and believing that we have very little control. So it's like, it's a good day when a bunch of good things happen. It's a bad day when a bunch of bad things happen. And I'm just kind of waiting to see what I get. And it's just a very powerless victim-y way to go about your life. The truth is that there are a lot of things that we can't control. Example being other people, our past, world events and situations. We can't control those things. But we have this beautiful space in between what we feel and those events we're experiencing. And that beautiful, spacious, elegant space is called our brain and what we think. And that's where our entire domain of control exists. We can decide what we want to think about anything. And honestly, Deb, I remember the first time that I heard somebody say that, and it was about 30 years ago, and it was Wayne Dyer, one of my greatest Mm -hmm. mentors and teachers. And he was like, you can believe anything you want to believe for any reason. And I was like, what? Like, what? Huh? Like I sort of knew in that moment, my life would never be the same. It's just Mm -hmm. one of those, like, I know where I was. I know what I was wearing. I know what I thought after I heard it. Like it just drew a line in the sand in my life. And I was like, okay, now will be the rest of my life. Wow. It's just understanding that the most powerful question we can ever ask ourselves is what do I want that to mean? And we can answer that any way we want about anything, including some of these clients say to me, well, it's not like I can go back and rewrite the past. I mean, like that thing really happened. And I'm like, but you can start right in your current moment, right in the now. And you can decide it means something else. Mm -hmm. You can decide that the thing that you've always thought held you back is really what's making all the new things in your life now possible. You can decide that the thing that hurt you and, and set you back is now something you view as resilience building. Like our interpretation power is in the now and it's always available. And you can keep changing what you think over and over and over and over again. So we wanna sift and sort through the facts. What are the facts, the things we truly can't control? And what are the things that I'm actually just thinking about those things? And most of what we do all day, those 80,000 thoughts we think, are simply that. They're just thoughts. They're just made up interpretations of the world. They're things we believe about ourselves, about other people, about um, the people we live with, about our past, about what we're capable of. They're just bundled thoughts that feel incredibly real and true. And they're strong neural pathways because we've thought them a lot. And so they're easy to think over and over. And so life starts to look the same. It's like Groundhog's Day. Every day you get up and you're capable of the same things and you speak the same way and you have the same behaviors and you react to the same people the same way and you overreact to the same things you overreact to and uh, and nothing really ever changes because we're trying to change from the outside in, not the inside out. This is amazing. I think this topic, I know I could just spend forever talking about it. Most of us, when we talk about, you know, different people, well, let me say this, when you work with someone what change do you see when they start working with you? Like from before and after, just, just like, give us a picture of what does that look like from your vantage point? What do you see? 
Yeah. So interesting. And it's pretty consistent, whether it's somebody in one of my group programs Mm -hmm. or it's a private client, usually people come in with some version of, you know, their story. Um, Mm -hmm. This is what I've been through. And because I've been through this, I am capable of this and I am broken or stuck in these ways because of this story. And it, for me, when I hear it, it's like, I always picture almost like they have a backpack of rocks that they've <laughs> got, like, slung over their back and yeah. they're like presenting me with all the rocks. They're like, I want you to see how heavy this is. I want you to see what I'm like carrying around and what I'm lifting. And it's very real for them. And I understand that. And so my work really is immediately to create metacognition, this jumping off point, this thinking about our thinking, this awareness, and then give them the tools and the constructs where they can actually start to sift through thought versus fact. Mm -hmm. And that's the jumping off point. Once people can do that, change starts to happen really, really quickly because they can get up above their brain and they can they can take a stance I call the watcher mode where they can really see themselves thinking and they can see the repetition in their thoughts. They can understand what's serving them in their thought patterns and what's not serving them. And then they get to the place where they're non-resistant, meaning they're not beating themselves up anymore, but they can really see that space I described where you have all your choice. Yeah. And so that happens really, really quickly. And then what's really funny, and I notice this a lot with private clients, is that they'll um, talk to me or they'll message me and they'll say, here's what's going on. And I know exactly what you're going to say. <laughs> so funny. It's just so I think funny. I've done that. <laughs> oh, they all, everyone does it. I, and I know mm-hmm. you're going to tell me. And then there's this. And I know what you're going to say about that. But that's really the beginning of them understanding there's more than one way to look at something. Right. And then it just picks up speed. And, and, and then in a very short period of time, once they've created all this awareness and all this thought choice and all the option to feel differently and behave differently, that's when all of this like beautiful connection to the quantum field of possibility happens. And they start being inspired to take new actions and new connections and they find synchronicities in their life. And it's like doors start opening all over the place Because literally they're not the same version of themselves. If you think differently, you become differently. And as you are, opportunities match who you are, not what you do. So as you become a different person, what's possible for you literally transforms, literally. So it's not about hustling our way to something new. We've all done that. And we, we all can do a little of that. But if you try and change your life with action, you haven't changed the essence of who you are. You haven't changed the way you think and feel and the way you show up in the world. And so even if you can get somewhere with a little bit of action and we all can, it's sort of like you'll tumble back down that that, like hill and go back to really that essence of who you are, which is the way you think and feel and show up in the world. So when we go for changing that first, when we change who you are and the way you think of yourself and the way you move and hold yourself, in the world, then the way you behave is like a domino effect. It changes and all the possibilities attached to the way you show up in the world also change. So good. So your clients, your, most of your clients, well, let's go with your, it's, I know you have, you teach in a group program and you have a a lot of diversity background and you also have private one-on-one clients, which I am a private one-on-one client. Are they mostly women entrepreneurs? Are, are we looking for that? Like, I need that extra nudge. Almost like, you know, you see athletes have mindset coaches yeah, and like yeah. all this is, is that who you specialize in or like, tell me about that. You know, I don't set out to specialize in female entrepreneurs, but that's who I wind up with for the most part. Yeah. And I think you're your analogy is a really good one that, uh, listen, I always say, if you want to see what your brain is doing unsupervised, try starting a business. You'll find <laughs> it really fast with all your crappy thoughts are, because they'll all come to the surface yes, really fast. So I do think much like the athletes, all the athletes, all the top athletes, all the Olympians, all yes. the people that we revere athletically, they all have mindset coaches. And mm-hmm. I think being an entrepreneur is the same really, um, really difficult challenge. It's also the most exciting challenge, but it it calls on you to look at every one of your beliefs about who you are, what's possible, 
what type of risk are you willing to put yourself out and try? It, it is going to challenge all of your concept around failure and success. And so to that end, if you can't get a handle on the way you think and feel and manage yourself, no amount of desire, you know, I really want to make this business work. No amount of desire can compensate for a self-concept that won't support that desire. And so it's really incumbent upon us as entrepreneurs to do mindset work, not so that we just arrive somewhere, but so that we learn the tools. The tools I teach and the concepts and the constructs are tools you can use in all areas of your life. So right. I, it's very common for me to have a client that will you know, have their business pick up, but then they'll also lose the 10 pounds they haven't been able to lose. They'll have their business take off. They'll start making more money and their relationships will suddenly up level as well because mindset crosses all the boundaries. Everything. Yeah. So since I've met you, this is so interesting. Uh, You know, I have a group program, House of Impact, and I talk about there's three things you need to be a successful entrepreneur. You need to understand marketing, right? Yeah. You got to have some sales, right? Yeah. And you got to have mindset. And that mindset aspect is so critical because what I see with, um, I'd say every woman I coach, cause it's just, we all have it is we get in our own way. And I think anyone out there listening would say, yep, that's me too. I get in my own way. And it's that getting in our own way, managing our thoughts, why this is so critical for anyone running their own business, that there needs to be such an emphasis on this. Like I can't, I can't help someone grow their business with marketing and business, you know, skill set if they don't have their mindset, like there's, it, it won't happen. Yes. So yeah, it's so critical. And yeah. you and I talk about this. I know um, some of our other colleagues, you'll hear us say, okay, mindset is everything, right? Yeah. I mean, some people say it's energy. Some people say it's, I've heard a lot of things and and the space gets very woo out there. This is a whole nother conversation. (laughs) It does. What do you think about the woo? I mean, because it's always. I'm far on the other side of that spectrum, but you know, here's what I'll say about the woo. Yeah. I think like, you know, I think there are a lot of boats that can get you somewhere. And you know, it's, those are just not my boats. I like (laughs) science. I like to understand operationally how our brain works. I like to talk about quantum science. I like to talk about neuroscience. I don't, you know, you know, I'm always kidding around. I don't know how to sage anything. I don't know anything about feng shui or whatever those things are. I I don't know about that stuff. But here's the thing. There's a place for everything that moves you to consider other ways to think and feel. So I'm all about that. Um, I just want people to understand a little bit of the science at the minimum so that they understand, for example, a vision board. So fun. I mean, I personally would never make one, but so fun. I've seen some beautiful ones. They're cool. They're amazing. I get the concept, but if you don't understand how to flow energy, if you don't understand how we actually get things consciously into our subconscious, so they become automated, which is a process that involves repetition and elevated emotion. If you don't understand the science of creating belief then you can have the most beautiful vision board in the entire world. You can walk by it a hundred times a day. It's not going to move the needle in terms of neural pathways in your subconscious. And so I'm like, if you want to do it like affirmations or like a vision board, or I think it's great, but let's have a little science. So we know what to do with a vision board. Let's have a little science. So we understand the subconscious. If we're going to try and affirm things to ourselves. The, the woo to me is the, is the fluff without the, the science to it. But I think when we combine both, it can be so incredibly powerful. I have a, a woman in one of my, um, in, in my program, one of my programs right now, who's like a Reiki master. We've been having some really cool discussions about energy. And she's like, I didn't know we were talking about the same thing. And I'm like, yeah, energy is created by what you think and feel. So if you have agency over what you think and feel, then you're energetically in control, which is what a Reiki master knows how to do. So we've been kind of like geeking out, having these conversations, realizing that there's a lot of overlap. It's like we speak foreign languages to each other, but when we can kind of find translation, we're like, oh my gosh, yeah, that's amazing. And so I say, bring it all. 
I say bring it all, like bring all the stuff you want to do and the way you want to get in. But everybody needs a little science so that we go a little deeper than the let's just all sit around and, you know, kumbaya and think positive thoughts. Because this is a complicated world and you're not going to always have positive thoughts and you are going to have self-doubt. You are going to have fear and you are going to have overwhelm. So then what? And if we don't have the science, we can't manage when that shows up for us. Right. Right. I, I'm totally a believer. Um, okay. So let's, let me ask you this. What is the most common, like crap that you get from your clients? <laughs> like, I think everyone will see themselves. I mean, I'm just like, you know, it's kind of like, okay, we're in the back room. No one's hearing us really ha, 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 just because we're on a podcast, but like, what do you hear a lot? Like, God, I hear this one all the time that you just want to be like, is yeah, there like I mean, a common or is it just all over the place? It's there's not one, there's but not. with entrepreneurs, like self-doubt yeah. is self-doubt. massive. All, all the faces of self-doubt. I can't do it. I don't know enough. I've never done it before. I'm confused. Um, overwhelm is a big one. Not simply not knowing how to manage all the things. And yeah. really believing that overwhelm is something that happens, that it's not created by the way we think about something. So again, that's a victim-y place of like, I, overwhelm is happening to me. Um, yeah. a, a lot of fear of failure, you know, a lot of what will they think and what if it doesn't work and all that. But, you know, if, if I bottled those all together, and of course there's anxiety and worry and all those things too. But mm-hmm. if we bottle those things together, what they, if we boil them down, what they have in common is they're all the victim stance. Oh, wow. They're all the same. Oh my gosh, this is happening to me and I ha- I'm stuck. I have no control over it. Yeah. This is this is the way I am and I always get overwhelmed. I, I I don't know how to move forward. I'm afraid and I can't. It's it's like literally these people sound like they're in cement or something. Like there there's no ability to see that there's another way to interpret what they're creating for themselves. So I think the victim stuff is what I see the most. And we all do it, myself included. Like this isn't like a, this isn't just like a, some people problem. This is- Well, I was going to say, you you work with some pretty high powered women. I mean, you do. So I'm curious, are you hearing this regardless of like how much money people make or how successful people are? That's probably the biggest- little secret out there is all the people that are trying to get to their first six figures are like, when I get there, the self-doubt will disappear. I'll feel so confident. The overwhelm will be managed. Like they're sure that that's happyville, like the hundred thousand dollar mark. They're like, that's the (laughs) island. I'm going to burn the boats. When I get there, I'm good. And, and then I get off the phone with one of them and I get on the phone with one of my million dollar a year earners. And they're like, I don't know if I can keep it up. I feel like I'm not going to be able to stay at this level. I feel like the whole house is going to crumble. And so it's like the same stuff at that level too. So it doesn't really matter where you come in. It's like, oh shit, I thought it was going to get better. Well, it does if you're doing the work. I mean, if you do the work, work. then you'll have the Isn't that interesting though? Like who would think that, right? Well, nobody thinks it. All the the people and the million dollar business owners all are like reflect back with these rose colored glasses. Oh, I remember when I was starting out and it wasn't this hard. And I'm like, (laughs) yes, it was. And meanwhile, I'm talking to people that are starting out. They're like, this is killing me. I'm like, oh my gosh, you people have to talk to each other. Listen, you don't get in this because this is easy money. Like working for your own business. It's hard. It's hard. And the bigger the stakes, right? The bigger the stakes, the bigger the business, the more there is to manage with your mind. Yeah. So the tools work at any level. They work at all levels, but we got to keep implementing them. We got to keep using all of the tools of mindset and understanding the difference between thinking consciously and subconsciously and what's a neural pathway and what does it mean to have emotions that we tend tend toward and are habituated and how do we really break a habit? And, and what about motivation versus inspiration? And what, like all of this stuff has to be learned and then applied at any level. There isn't any place you get to, like, unfortunately there isn't Happyville where you just get somewhere and then you don't need to work on your mindset. Like that's just, that's a fantasy and it's not, it's not real. It's everyday work. It's everyday Everyday work. work. Yeah. Yeah. Um, 
I love that my husband is making a smoothie during my podcast. <laughs> it is running hard. You know, like- um, you know, one thing, I don't know if we can do this, if it'll make sense for everyone, but I just thought it'd be kind of fun. I boxer you every day because I'm your, I'm your private client. Like you're my master, you're, you're my mindset coach. Right. And this is one I've boxed you with before, but I love how she will just give it to me. She will come out with like, she will just be like, kick me in the pants, like straight up. And I love that about you. Um, and so could we role play like a real boxer? Would you be sure. open to that? <laughs> that? Okay. I mean, you could just, you could bring it like you normally would with me. Cause I think it's interesting. I mean, you guys are literally going to hear like, like a typical moment in my day and a typical moment in Liz's life. Like, cause she gets this shit all the time. So, okay. So like, I have a workshop coming up, which is, yeah. you know, for coaches, we call it a launch. Cause I'm going to be opening up my program. It's always nerve wracking. Yeah. I'm excited, but I get really nervous every time. And I'll say things to Liz, like Liz, I'm feeling a little overwhelmed. I got all this stuff. It's Monday. I'm scared. Like, what if no one shows up? Our numbers are lower. I don't know. What should I do? Like, I know what you're going to tell me, but like, I just need to hear it. <laughs> what do you say back? Like, say you're boxing. What do you say back? Yeah. So the first thing I would say is, you know, when did overwhelm like show up and plant itself on top of you? Like, because that's a really victim-y stance. You're like, first of all, you introduce with, I, I always, every time I, you're already setting the stage and like deciding ahead of time what's going to be difficult for you. So you're like, I, I always get this. I've got this thing coming up. I know it's going to be challenging. I know I'm going to get overwhelmed. I know. And like, why would you tell yourself that? Why would you talk to yourself that way? Why would you assume ahead of time that you're going to be in defeatist mode and working uphill against things that could go easily? Why would you not invite yourself to answer that powerful question? I've got a program coming up. How do I want to think about this? Mm. What do I want it to mean? Overwhelm is not something that happens to us. We're not the victim of overwhelm. We are experiencing overwhelm when we mismanage our mind, when we aren't sitting down and deciding what we want to do with the things that we have to do and what's the order of importance and how can we sift and sort. And we're powerful enough that we can do this work. Overwhelm is the sky is falling. Help me, help me, the sky is falling. Mm -hmm. And nobody ever gets out of overwhelm by saying the sky is falling. Like it's not possible. And what do we do when we're overwhelmed? We freeze. (laughs) We freeze. So we've got 73 things to do. And instead of doing any of them, when we're in overwhelm, we do none of them. Whereas if we just said to our brain, I'm really smart. I'm good at doing this. This is super important to me. What are the three things that I need to do immediately? And everything else goes on the back burner. Let's do the three. And then we do the three. And we create this feeling of productivity and then we can go back and we can grab another three. But as long as you show up as a victim, as long as you believe something's happening to you because of a program that you're launching and you can't help it, it just happens to you every time, then you're a victim. And victims never get out of their own way. So good. I've gotten one of those boxers, by the way. (laughs) That's a real one. Sometimes you'll spice it up even more because you can be very spicy. Well, sometimes I throw in some colorful words, but I'm not. Oh, I see. I love them though. It's like, and I'm sure you vary on who you're talking to on how much color we like. I bring the color, bring it. (laughs) I like, I like the colorful boxer. Liz, I could go on and on. This was amazing. All you listeners out there, you're probably like, how can I, how can I find out more about Liz Nicholas? Where, how can people learn more about you? And you do have two amazing programs, a level one and a level two. Yeah. Um, so they can start managing their own brains. How can yeah. they find you? So you can find me at my website, liznicholas.com. And I've got some free gifts over there that you can go and grab a belief formula and listen to um, a talk that I gave. And also my Facebook group page where I actually launched my programs is called the Mindset Mastery School for Women in Business. And I do live trainings every week, free live trainings every week. They're all housed there. So there are God knows how many live trainings on mindset. And I run a couple of um, week-long programs that are free every year. And I also launch my Mindset Masterclass Level 1 and 2 right from inside that uh, group page. So that's the best place to get all of my free 
material. I'm actually in that page every day, interacting with people, posting, and Mondays I do my free uh, training. So that's the best way to come and hang out in my world with me. She's the real deal, y'all. Like she has rocked my world. I'm just telling you. And everyone I know that works with you, I have literally watched people go from like blah, 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 to like, oh my God, I got it all. Life is amazing. I'm hitting the road. I'm seeing America. You know what I'm talking about? seen amazing. I mean, I've just seen people just step into their like full blooming selves. It's a beautiful thing what you do. And for all of you, mindset is so key. I just want everyone to be able to have that gift of being able to control. Yeah, I'm so excited to be coming in to your program. I am now going to get to work inside your program once a quarter, which I'm so excited about. Thank you for saying that. Even say that Liz is going to be coming in a house of impact quarterly. And uh, get our heads set on straight because it's so important. And you have such amazing people that come in to work with you and they're so creative and they're so interesting and they're so smart and funny. And it's, I'm just really excited to be part of that on an ongoing basis. Looking forward to it. I am too. It's how we, it's how we grow. We got to, we we have to have mindset. Thank you so much. Um, I hope you, you're definitely going to come back again. There's always so much more we can talk about. So please come (laughs) back. I will. I promise. I'd love to. Thanks for having me, Deb. Yeah. Thanks so much, Liz. Bye, everybody. Thanks for listening to Brand and Biz Spills with your host, Debbie White. Visit franklydeb.com where you can connect with us and join our free Facebook community where all the brand action happens. And I love hanging out on Instagram. So follow me there at franklydeb. And join us next time for another episode of Brand and Biz Bills. Let's get real on women growing powerful brands.